Hey, what's going on? In today's video, I'm going to show you how to get started with OnRaid. We're going to talk about what OnRaid is, what hardware we can use. We're also going to go over the installation process and the initial configuration. Before we get started, I want to give a big shout out to OnRaid for providing a license to bring you this video and future tutorial videos. So definitely big thanks to them. So what is OnRaid? OnRaid is an operating system that you can set up on almost any computer and turn it into a robust network attached storage server. It also has support for Docker containers and virtualization, allowing you to set up different applications or operating systems like Home Assistant, Plex, Ubuntu, and all from one single machine. For the network attached storage, you can set up multiple drives in an array and the drives can vary in speed and size. You can also add more drives to the array at any time without having to reconfigure everything. It also has parity protection, allowing you to use one or two drives as parity that can rebuild the data of a failed drive on a replacement drive. What hardware can we use with OnRay? That pretty much depends on what you're going to use the OnRay server for. If you're going to use it as a NAS server, then the requirements are minimal. You will need to concentrate on the number of drives that you want to use for storage. To use it to run applications in Docker containers or virtual machines, you will need to concentrate on the performance of the hardware. The machine will need to support virtualization, have a CPU with four or more cores, and at least four to eight gigabytes of RAM. OnRaid is not free. It requires purchasing a license that varies in price depending on the number of drives attached to the server. The basic license, for example, supports up to six storage devices and costs $59. However, you can install the full OnRaid OS for free and try it out for 30 days so you can check if it's right for you. To install the OnRaid OS, you must install in a USB flash drive with a unique GUID, a global unique identifier. OnRaid uses the flash drive's GUID to link into the license that you get. Premium flash drives from brands like Samsung, for example, we have a global unique identifier. For my OnRay server, I'm using the Samsung Fit Plus, which is small and easy to keep hidden on the back of the server. You can find a link for the flash drive in the description below. To set up the OnRay server on a flash drive, download the USB flash creator from the OnRay website. Then insert the USB flash drive into the computer and launch the OnRay USB flash creator. There are three steps to follow. On the first one, you can select what version of the OnRaid OS you want to install. You definitely want to download the stable release and also the latest version. Before moving to step two, you can click on Customize and set up the server's name. The server should definitely have an assigned IP address when it connects to your home network. You can set it up here if you would like or assign the IP to the server on your router settings. For step two, the creator automatically selects the USB flash drive that you inserted. If it's not, you can choose it from the drop down. Lastly, for step three, click on write and on the pop up that comes up, click on erase and write. When the process completes, inject the flash drive from the computer and connect it to the machine where you're going to set up the OnRay server. For the first part of the installation, you need to have a monitor and a keyboard connected to the server. Once the initial setup is completed, the server can be headless and you can access the OnRay web interface from any computer. On the first boot, you want to access the BIOS settings and set the boot priority to boot from the flash drive. If you are going to set up virtual machines, you also want to enable virtualization in the BIOS. Save the changes and when the machine boots, it will start loading the OnRaid OS automatically. When the OS is loaded, it will show you the IP address that you can use to access the web interface from any computer. If you set up a name for the server on the USB flash creator, you can also access the web interface using that name. When you access OnRay from a browser for the first time, you are directed to the registration page. In there, you can purchase a license or click on get a trial key and start a 30 day free trial so you can check if it's right for you. After the registration, you are redirected to the main page to start adding all the drives to the array. I'm using this machine to run Docker containers, virtual machines, and an NAS server. I have two four terabytes hard drives, which one of them is going to be used for parity. If something happens to the other drive, I can rebuild the data on another replacement drive with no problem. I also added one 250 gigabyte solid state drive that will be used as a cache drive. Because SSDs are faster than mechanical drives, we can set it to run the Docker containers and the virtual machines from the cache drive. We can also set it that when transferring data from other devices to the NAS, the data is downloaded first to the cache drive, 
Later on, in off hours, a script called the mover will automatically transfer the data to the drives in the array. Let me show you how to do all this. When adding a parity drive, the drive must be the same size or bigger than any data drive in your array. You can add up to two parity drives. If you have more than six data drives connected, I would definitely recommend having two parity drives set up. Like that, if two drives happen to fail, you have those two parity drives to rebuild the data on replacement drives, reducing the chances of losing data. After adding the parity drives, add the data drives, and if you are setting up a cache drive, set it up below as well. For cache, you can set up several drives. For example, if you set up two SSDs of 250 gigabytes each, on RAID by default sets the cache to RAID 1, which means that one of the drives will mirror the other one, so if one of the cache drives fails before the data was transferred to the data drive, the data is still saved on the other drive. Also, the cache's overall size would just be 250 gigabytes instead of a total of 500 gigabytes. You could change that and set it to RAID 0, which means that the second drive will be an extension and the overall size of the cache would then be 500 gigabytes. Lastly, click on Start and on the pop-up, click on Proceed to start the array. Because it's the first time starting the array and a parity drive was installed, the system will begin building the parity. That process usually takes a while to complete, and the time frame depends on the size of the parity drive. In my case, I installed one 4TB drive, so it took around 6 hours for the process to complete. The data drive and the cache drive both show as unmountable right now. That's because they both need to be formatted for an empty file system to be created. To format the drives, check the option, yes, I want to do this. On the warning pop-up that comes up, click on OK, and then click on the Format button. Give it a minute for the process to finish, and the drives would then be ready to use. When we accessed the web interface for the first time, there was no login screen. When we first boot Onray, there was no option to create a password. So right now, the web interface can easily be accessed by anyone inside your home network. We definitely want to change that and create a strong password to protect the Onray server. To do that, go into Users, click on the root user, and enter a new password. Click on Change and the web interface will now require you to sign in using the root user credentials. There are two things that you want to do with the USB flash drive. One, if you notice, there is a warning icon next to the flash drive. The reason for that is because the share settings on the drives are set to public, allowing anyone in the network to access the boot drive's content. You definitely want to change that and disable the sharing settings to avoid the flash drive from being exposed to the network. The other thing that you want to do is back up the USB flash drive so if something ever happens to it, you can easily restore the backup on a replacement USB flash drive. To change the share settings, click on the flash drive and then under SMB security settings, change the export to no and the security to private. Click on apply and if you go back to the main tab, the warning sign will now be gone, and the flash drive won't be accessible via the network anymore. To back up the flash drive, click on Flash again to access the settings. Then click on the Flash Backup button so a new backup is created and downloaded to your computer. You definitely want to keep that backup in a safe place so you can easily restore the settings on a replacement drive in the future. You also want to make a new backup anytime you make significant changes to your own RAID server. Alright, so we have OnRaid installed, we went over some of the initial configurations, and we have the array running. The next thing that I'm going to show you is how to set up shared folders so you can access them from any device in your network. We will also create user profiles so only users with credentials can access the shared folders. To create a new shared folder, go to the Shares tab and click on Add Share. We'll create a simple share so we are not going to go over all the different settings here. Set up a name for the shared folder, and for the allocation method, leave it to high water. There are three different options that you can set. Because on this machine, I only have one data drive, there's no reason to change it from the default. If you have more than one data drive, you can set up the allocation method to the available options. If you click on the title itself, it will provide you with the details on how each method works. If you set up a cache drive in your Onray server, you can save the transfer data to the cache drive first. OnRay would then transfer the data to the array at a later time. Because the cache drive is a solid state drive, the data transfer will be faster than when saving directly to the array mechanical drives. Click on the Add Share button, and the share folder will now be created and accessible in the network. Under SMB Security Settings, the security is set to public by default. 
allowing anyone in the network to access the shared folder. We can change this and create user profiles that can securely access the shared folder. So first change the security to secure or private and then click on apply. To create a new user profile to access the shared folder, go to the user tab and click on add user. Then enter a username, password, and you can also add an image if you would like. Lastly, click on the add button to set the new user profile. After that, go back to the share tab and click on the share folder to access the settings. And under SMB user access, you can set the permissions for any user you created. If you set up the share folder to private, you will have three types of permissions to set up, read, write, read only, and no access. If you set up the share folder to secure, you will only have two options, read, write, and read only. After you have the share folder created, you can then map it to the computer and access it with the credentials for the user profile you created. To map a drive in Windows, open the File Explorer, right click on this PC or network and then click on Map Network Drive. In the pop-up that comes up, tap in the folder field, backslash, backslash, the name for the server or the IP address and then backslash and the name for the folder. In my case, it will be backslash, backslash, the arc, backslash, backup. Click on finish and then a pop-up comes up asking to enter the credentials for the user profile you created. I want to show you a few more basic settings before we end this video. We're going to set up a parity check schedule and set the array to automatically start when the machine is rebooted. So first go into the settings tab and click on scheduler. What the parity check does is that it reads the data disk and the parity disk comparing computer parity and the store parity. If errors are found, they are reported, allowing you to replace any failing drives. The parity check is a process that takes a long time. For my four terabyte drive, it took around seven hours. My suggestion is to set up a parity check to run once a month and to start the process overnight if possible. In the scheduler, you can also change the default schedule for the mover if you would like. I highly suggest leaving it set to run daily. However, you can change the time when you want the mover to run. When you're done with the configuration, click on apply to set the changes. To enable the array to start automatically when the server is rebooted, go back to the main settings tab and click on disk settings. Then where it says enable auto start, change it to yes, and then click on apply. Now, anytime the server is rebooted, you won't have to enable the array manually. It will be done automatically. Any Docker container and virtual machine will also start automatically after the array starts. There are a lot more things that I would like to go over, like setting up virtual machines, Docker containers, configure notifications in Array, setting up Home Assistant in a virtual machine, and a lot more. However, I'm going to go over those things in separate videos, so definitely stay tuned. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and I'll see you in the next video.